<laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> reminding. I think, you know, I, I can see 20 years from now. Here I am really. Uh, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll be, uh, uh, and you'll say, hey, don't forget to record. <laughs> So anyway, For a place uh, love. Um, as I said earlier, I don't have a primary topic to discuss, but I did come up with a small idea. Uh, the uh, um, that I can at least kick off the discussion with. And so uh, let me uh, let me. Do, 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 do. Okay, now I have to do the uh, uh, bring. Come on. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Minimize. Display screen. Maybe it's at the bottom here. Security stop video. Okay, come on. I know that. I have many times used the display screen and oh, full screen, keep on top, speaker view, next yeah, yeah. All right. Have they changed things? Talk about lousy, you know, user interface standards have just gone to hell. Yeah. Um, Especially with Zoom. I know there's a share screen at the very bottom that's green. That might there be. There it is. But... There it is. Thank you. Thank no you. No worries. Uh, but no, they've cluttered that whole interface for the host. There we go. And now we are screen sharing. And now I have to display the first thing. Uh, the, the, uh, what triggered this line of thought was uh, some comments on the Discord server where somebody, I believe it was Abdenor, who uh, had posted some stuff from uh, ChatGPT4 where they had actually gotten it to write encounters with options, which is terribly impressive. Uh, and he posted a number of these, but I noticed that there was something wrong with the options. I looked them over and I couldn't figure out what was bothering me so much. Uh, but it, they just didn't, they were nice. They were well-written. I mean, they, they were good, but they fell short in some fashion. And I just could not figure out why. And so I spent some time thinking about it. And then I, uh, I realized that they did not do this. That is, the options it generates don't appear to have any point to them. They don't support, they would not, they'd be utterly useless in Le Mortatur because they don't reflect any of the artistic goals of Le Mortatur. And so I was thinking that this, as you recall, is a grossly simplified architectural or schematic for the Mort d'Artur, where you get lots of options in a linear path, which doesn't diverge until the very end when the player makes a choice that determines the outcome. But those, uh, 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 the, those choices you make along the way affect global variables that Actually, those are what determine the outcome. Okay, so why aren't we getting this? Well, um, one thing. The, here is the problem. We want the options to reflect different uh, changes in the global variables. And the question is, what should those global variables be? How would we actually decide? That is, I was looking at the, the chat GPT stuff and, you know, how could we apply? What global variables would we want to use? With Le Mort d'Artur, I, I came up with global variables. I modified them, altered them through the course of the design process. But 
uh, I couldn't figure out any general rule or guidance for determining what the global variables should be. Therefore, oh, and, and one key point in all of this is that that principle should apply throughout the entire process, not just in the first one, but in all of the encounters. So how do we uh, set up the global variables that will be altered by the options? And uh, the trick, the, the key thing is to look at the very end and say, okay, if we're using this grossly simplified schematic, obviously the final results uh, need to be differentiated and whatever means of differentiation you intend to use should be reflected, should be the global variables. You know, why does we choose the top option instead of the bottom one? Well, here's why, here's the algorithm and it depends on these global variables. So you're gonna, you're gonna use those to work back. You take those ideas and apply them back to the individual options to determine what the global variables will be. Okay, simple, clear so far, but how do you decide that basic thing? Well, you can, many stories you really can reduce to at least if you're willing to be intellectually brutal you can take a lot of stories and uh, reduce them to a simple message. Macbeth, uh, <laughs> payback's a bitch. Uh, let's see, Romeo and Juliet, love conquers all. Uh, Merchants of Venice, uh, Merchant of uh, Justice Prevails. Huck Finn, uh, if you've read it, basically Huck is, and, and what's this slave's name, Jim? I think his name is Jim. Um, they are basically innocent, uh, naive people wa wandering through a world full of evil, and they just can't understand why people are so mean. Uh, Pride and Prejudice is really complicated, but I boiled it way down to the idea of patience and persistence. So, yeah, you can reduce uh, various stories to uh, simple themes, the problem is that you wouldn't want to do this with any particular, you wouldn't want to try to take Macbeth and make it interactive storytelling because everybody already knows, whatever you do, don't kill those nobles. Uh, and, or Julia, or Romeo, she's not really dead, uh, and so forth. Um, so you couldn't apply these specifically, but you should be able to actually you work backwards you start with the theme such a, a theme such as justice prevails or um payback's a bitch and then you work backwards from there to figure out your story world so that's really the the useful idea here what do you want to say uh at this point, I'll digress a bit and point out that an awful lot of designs strike me as little more than fucking around with the computer. Oh, gee, let's see. I'll, I'll make it a story world, see, and I'll have these, uh, I'll have some dragons and uh, some, some people to kill them and some uh, nice, friendly people and some guys who get in the way and a um, you know, cave, gotta have a cave and... Uh, you know, we'll throw it all together and make things happen. Um, that's uh, that's an awful lot of what I see. People just starting off saying, I want to make something. I don't have any ideas, so I'll just sort of take bits and pieces that I've seen elsewhere and throw them all into a soup and stir the soup and see what comes out. And that's uh, have I ever done that? I don't think I've ever done the bit about scribes versus authors, but uh, I want to uh, uh, communicate that. Um, this is a lecture I gave decades ago to a class of computer science students, 
where I, I challenged him, are you a scribe or an author? A scribe takes does his pride in the technology he uses. So he can really write nicely, but he doesn't really give a damn about the ideas. He's just copying things down, writing things down. He's just a scribe. An author starts with an idea. And for the author, the means of communication are of secondary importance. What's important is the idea. And so the, uh, the author figures out, it, you know, starts with something they want to say and then figures out, how can I say it? So I would certainly urge everybody here to uh, um, start with your idea. Uh, not with the technology or with the, don't start off saying, I'm going to do something. Uh, anyway, here is, by the way, one really simple um, concept that can be used. In fact, this is what happens in Le Morte d'Artur. A goodly number of stories are basically about a character transition uh, at the end. Uh, in Star Wars 4, Luke Skywalker uh, goes through the character transition when Obi-Wan's ghost says, Luke, use the force. And he turns off his targeting computer, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's when he makes the transition from boy to man and from person to Jedi. Um, uh, Star Wars 6, Darth Vader. Uh, it is the <laughs> famous scene where the emperor is sapping Luke and uh, Darth Vader looks at Luke and then he looks at the emperor and the emperor zaps him some more and Darth Vader looks at Luke and looks at the emperor. This goes on for a while. And eventually Darth Vader, character transition. No, I'm not a bad guy. And he grabs the emperor and throws him into the uh, handily propinquitous uh, 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 infinite uh, whole so uh um that those are transitions tale of two cities if any of you ever read that that's a really good character transition um uh it takes place during the french reign of terror when they're chopping lots of people's heads off and there are these two guys a french fellow who's noble and good and all sorts of good things and an English guy who's really smart and clever, but basically he's kind of a useless, worthless. He's not evil. Uh, he's not a criminal. He's just pointless. He, he, he gets drunk a lot. He's just a wasted person. But the interesting thing is the two guys look almost identical. And also, this, is, of course, is Charles Dickens. And so there are a million secondary threads and side stories and romances going on. But to cut through all the crap at the end of the story, uh, the noble Frenchman is, uh, has been in London uh, because he would be, uh, because he's an enemy. He was a noble, and so they'd chop his head off in France. But he has to go back to France to save a uh, friend of his. And he goes back under an assumed name. And of course, they catch him. And so they're going to chop his head off. Oh, no, the noble guy who's in love with the beautiful girl and blah, blah. And uh, at this point, the English miscreant uh, comes up with his clever plan uh, and switches places with the noble French guy and uh, so that he'll be have his head chopped off. And as he's uh, uh, approaching the guillotine, he says to himself, uh, it is a far, far better thing I do today than I have ever done before. And so he dies a noble death. Character transition from useless jerk to noble self-sacrificing, whatever. Uh, Taming of the Shoe, Katerina, uh, starts off as a shrew, but then because her husband beats her and does all sorts of mean things to her, 
she realizes what it takes to be a good wife and character transition. I don't think this play is uh, is presented very often nowadays. Uh, so anyway, you could do a character transition in Le Morte d'Artur. It's not so much a transition as uh, a choice that is consistent with one line of character development. Uh, and if Arthur chooses to sacrifice himself, that's the best possible uh, resolution to his problem. So anyway, that's... Uh, but before... Before you yeah. jump to the next slide, I, I have some thoughts here. I'd like to, I'd like to share. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking a lot about these these setups and also the idea of having those variables um, give you different choices. So you do that with spools, or you could do that by having a, a formula for unlocking certain options in the same encounter. So it's the same scenario, and then the math here would be kind of different, right? So Luke's situation is more accretive, which is what you're doing in more to tour with the Merlin dialogues and the spirituality yeah. points. Yeah. But for Darth Vader, you do an inverse. So Darth Vader's, you know, you might have like a self-loathing variable that is probably pretty, pretty like self-loathing side. In fact, that was crucial but, in Tale of Two Cities. Right. Well, that's an interesting, yeah, that's, that's another good point. Although they have somewhat different modalities and I don't want to wax too long yeah. giving up an overview of all the different storytelling modes. That's maybe for another, another thread, but um, yeah, so you, you'd use an inverse function here where Darth Vader's intense self-loathing, and you could possibly mix that with the blend of, of like his love for Luke and, and, you know, maybe his spirituality points or something, if you wanted to make it more Baroque. And I think as far as feedback for the user, what's important is a sense of that the way I've been role-playing is consistent in the way that this character is, is getting to make choices in him. Mm -hmm. um and that way that they would just remember every all the all those details is adding up so if your math is sort of roughly congruent to that characterization then maybe that would work out in this case you know you you, you we do have a number of, of clues building up to that tense uh reversal at the end so so the idea of a reversal is mathematically i think interesting and then yeah sydney's kind of a, a different reversal but there is it is somewhat something of a reversal as well and it does involve self-loathing so there's a lot of commonality. And then uh, Kat's interesting because my wife's name is, is Caddy. And, and um, I played, uh, I was Lucentio as, as it happened because I didn't have the leading man chops. But um, I did play in Taylor, Taming of the Shrew. Oh. And, um, ten, <laughs> and 10 Things I Hate About You is, is one of our favorite uh, rom-com, probably our favorite rom-com between us. And, um, and, and that we are kind of like that. She's like a very... Uh, spicy lady and i'm i'm you know kind of a wild guy myself right so um i i'm not sure what the math is exactly i, I want to maybe leave that as an exercise to the reader but yeah there's like a there's a math there's a formula for each one of these is, is the point right so we, we should get yeah. comfortable with thinking in those analogies oh yeah yeah the only reason i emphasize the uh selection of the variables is that that is in my opinion, a more fundamental problem. Uh, that is, you first you got to figure out what the variables are. The algorithms are, you still got a problem figuring those out, but uh, you're going to need to figure out what are the decisive factors. So, well, and, and if you have too many dimensions, the feedback is going to get really confusing, yes, right? Yes, that so is. So then, a, what you would need to maybe do is cluster the, if, so if you might have a lot of dimensions for just having more characters with with the set the full set of p values you might not use all those values for relationship you might just have one p value is, is good enough yep. and that you have um maybe events that clearly demarcate what's going on in those specific relationships yeah. so at least that way you can um compartmentalize that complexity a little bit but even then the actual brute number of variables it's really we're, we're in the early innings here so i think going beyond like seven or, or nine is is really crazy at this point yeah, and, yeah, and maybe absolutely. Even those are That's a point I have hammered away at. It's my belief that you should hold it to three global variables. Uh, maybe sure. four if you're really desperate, but going above five, you're just you're. It won't work. You'll get overloaded with uh, with crap. So, so I came up with a form of a multi 
turn dialogue where instead of doing a bunch of trees right which gets you're going to make more ghouls for like where you are in that that's that's not the direction we want to go in right so instead what i do is is i have like abc and i do like an a b b c like i come up with encounters that that you would end up in based on those two variables in combination and i make it all like kind of loop around based on what you're then affecting right so you can you can change a, a relationship very quickly in like three turns or four turns as maybe a, like a, if you do it right you get a fourth or fifth as a victory lap um because you know that relation uh conversations especially in dire circumstances can be ex extremely consequential right uh so the trust level between the two characters can can go from zero to 0.5 for example in in a single scene right or or the opposite things like that um so anyway i'll let you continue on okay uh so so in when we do this character transition thing in the simplest possible version the transition uh, occurs right at the end of the story and in fact that is also the most dramatically powerful as whoops come on chris read, read there in each of these cases the transition occurs right at the end so the, here's an interest a a good simple model you could start with with a transition at the very end however this is an idea that never occurred to me that i would recommend now and that's to have transitional elements or components part way through in other words if you are um if you give enough good enough answers or answers that push the global variable above a certain threshold early, you get this special uh, uh, encounter that allows you to develop the, your character even further. So, and by the way, that, uh, that reminds me of a minor point that occurred to me. Um, you could, if, if Aristotle, one of his most famous points is that character is shown through action you don't do it through uh saying joe has a hot temper you show joe losing his temper um and in many ways what we could say is that this approach to interactive storytelling is really a way for a player to demonstrate their own uh or to develop their own character interactively in other words, the the character, the player starts off in a vaguely defined uh, character and then slowly improves the definition of that character, really nails down exactly what kind of person that is. And you could indeed have transitional points scattered throughout the entire thing. I'm not sure how that would work because I haven't done it, but... Uh, it's certainly something to think about. Um, whoops. So uh, let me unshare. Stop share. There we go. So those are uh, those are some preliminary thoughts here. Um, any? Oh, let me address uh, Bill. Twelve minutes ago. Uh, uh, pointed the thing about in 40 years ago in the art of computer game design has said choose a goal and a topic yes that's uh uh that this is a more specific version of that idea uh when i wrote it in uh art of computer game design i was speaking rather generally about games but now with this in interactive storytelling we need something more specific, more specific to the dramatic uh, goal you're attempting to share. So, uh, same basic con uh, concept, though. Uh, so, at this point, I'm going to open the floor to general discussion of this topic or anything else anybody would like to uh, raise. At least the well, idea of well, transition points in the middle is interesting, but what are you expecting would be the effect of one of these early transitions? Well, I'm, I'm 
I'm thinking that they might there there is a catch here in that they might allow the player to develop his character more at an earlier level. That is, in Lamorte d'Artour, you just answer all of these questions from Merlin, and that builds up the global variable. And then at the end, you actually make the big, you are given the opportunity to make the big choice. If I were to modify Lamorte d'Artour to incorporate this idea, I would have encounters that, you again, you have to earn this encounter by previously appropriate behavior. But if you've at least made a, a step in the right direction, it gives you a more serious challenge, uh, not a life and death one, but, you know, maybe a, a little, uh, you know, pinky finger one. You, you can lose your pinky finger and save your dog, uh, something like that. Um, uh, so you could permit uh, you know, smaller versions of the big character transition. And if the player takes the right choice, that, that really jumps his global variable. On the other hand, uh, if he takes the wrong choice, it makes him a, a, a lot worse. The difficulty with this is that um, it does, it, it reduces the dramatic intensity of the final choice. That is, you've, you've already gotten part way there and now just take the last step. So I don't know, I, I, I haven't done it, so I don't know how well it really would work. I'm speculating here. Well, it's also, it's a way to reward replay and to uh, do a difficulty adjustment based on exhibited competence with the genre in general and, and the, the, the story in particular. Um, well, if you'd like, I could um, show you guys what I've been doing in Sweep Weave and talk about some concrete structures that I've been experimenting with. Yeah. It's still a little bit uh, early. I uh, don't, I have a lot of the art generated and I could show you some of that real quick as well uh, in uh, Mid Journey, but uh, not finished yet. I don't have everything set up and I'm just closing a bunch of tabs here so I can clear this clear my head um and okay let's let's open up sweep weave one second okay. wish sasha was here because this would be good for uh feedback for him but i think that he um he kind of like went all out on this and he needs he needs to see something. I don't know. I think he needs to see a finished story world, or maybe like get a review or something. And then he'll feel like, okay, I should like, maybe I could get a burst of a Patreon or something and, and I could schedule some more time. Um, okay, so I'm just going to share a screen. I think he uh, usually oh, host these videos after the fact. What's that? I think he usually watches these videos on YouTube. Oh, okay, so I haven't seen that YouTube channel, so I'll have to make a note of that. Um, host disable participant screen sharing. Could you, uh, Chris, could you enable that for me? Yeah, could you, it, would it be easier just to uh, put screenshots onto the chat? Are you, do you need to show an, a video, an animation? Or it would be easier for me to just like talk and flow as I poke around. Okay, let me see if I can find. But I could also, I could also try to do that as well so, while you're taking that time. Anybody know where, wait. There's a show participants and now Patrick Moore. Let's see. And make host. There you go, Patrick. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Now, now I'm the host. Ha ha. Yep. Um, so, okay. I'll just share the app. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, sweet weave. If you've, uh, if you're unfamiliar, it has uh, lapis lazuli and, and clarity, which I find to be um so i like the dark mode um and you can run through it's got a graph view which is great um i'm gonna stop video spread um okay and then um here's the so you can it's kind of cool you can zoom out with the the mouse wheel uh these connectors are are preset 
loadings of, of the next thing. So you can do that as, as a crutch. Um, and you can also spool, you can make these flags to create like kind of a pearl necklace of where we are in the overall structure. And then it's kind of a pain in the butt to go through and make sure you've turned everything off and turn, but you know, you just, you know, got to copy paste that to a bunch of, uh, reactions, right. But, or uh, reaction effects, but that's okay. So that's how I'm organizing the graph. Um, so th these are kind of basics, right? So you got this, this, the starting sequence, you've got the early, uh, you're in the town getting into random uh, abilities, uh, situations where you can kind of influence people and be nice or, or whatever, um, give them a little wisdom. And then you run into this uh, Knights Templar situation. Um, and I've got a, a little bit of complexity there. So they, uh, I found out when I was doing my research, they actually burned 54 guys uh, on one day, uh, which is kind of intense. So I started, to, I started to find things that gave this a lot more um, gravitas dramatically than I had originally bargained for, right? I was originally thinking, okay, you'll be like a saint, you go into a town, you get into some things, and then maybe you get your head chopped off for, you know, pissing off the wrong people, and, and then you go to hell and save a few people. And and then I, I, I uh, originally, it was because of uh, this woman, Marguerite, Marguerite de Poirier, who wrote a book called The Mirror of Simple Souls, and it was a sort of mystical treatise uh, that basically, I think she got burned by her fiance, and she was like hating men. And really dealing with it by uh, thinking of God as love and um, and all of this. And so she wrote this book and it, it upset the people in the Catholic Church and they ended up having her killed. And the reason for that is because she wouldn't she could have gone to the trial and, and sort of said, yeah, you know, I wrote this and it was I, I was dumb and they would have given her a pass. But um, she didn't want to dignify their due process uh, with any kind of acknowledgement. So they were just they were forced. They had no other choice. Right but to have her burn. And this guy, Guillaume was her buddy. Uh, so you go meet him and you can like read the book and you, uh, you can kind of get into it with her. So this is the, um, this is the scenario that I was just describing earlier. And I've got, um, so I, and I, I put in like draft text. I'm kind of focused on what are the options and the reacts and the, the effects. And then I'll go back and, you know, maybe trust things up more textually um so you go back after having read it and then i basically thought of this as a three-dimensional uh vector space uh you can see like i'm not really <laughs> this is all placeholder text but but like I'm, I'm thinking of options as generally succeeding or failing and then i'm sometimes thinking about there's a third intermediate reaction just to keep things simple because this does turn into exponentially more work per encounter the more you do there. Um, and that I'm adding options not to exponentially increase my workload, but to create somewhat different approaches to the same themes. So um, so then where this is kind of clever, uh, so you, we've got three variables at play. Um, I think it's um, her feelings about you, her perceived uh, dominance, how, how much she perceives you to be dominant so she'll kind of just fall, go along a little bit more with your instructions, I guess. And then um, there's another one. So I've got uh, A, B, and C, and then and then I've got these six other ones, and some of them have little chutes and ladders back doors, so you can kind of go for an extra inning. And so in scenario A, okay, I didn't do that one yet. Um, I think I did B. No, I think I did C. Oh, okay, I didn't just see. Well, okay, so the idea is that the theme of A, B, and C is going to be based on one of those core variables. And then from that basis, where you depending on where you are with her, on turn three, you'll you'll get one of these and you'll be dealing with um mostly those variables. And um so then uh you you can end this uh the, the dialogue in a few ways. Uh, she's either going to go along with your, if, if you're like dominant enough and she's got enough uh, appreciation for you enough, she feels warmly enough that she'll go, she'll follow your escape plan. Um, usually she'll be like, look, this it's really important that I like stand my ground and because otherwise I'm, I'm going to be nobody and I won't exist. And they won't even acknowledge that I wrote this book. If I, if I like sign it away or something, 
you know so i have to do this this is my my martyrdom yeah oh, you know shit um or you convince her to let you go and and be in her stead right and then and that you claim it somehow you can talk her into that right so there's some room for that approach um if you do the retrial then it gets uh it gets kind of fun and you can say, oh, yeah, it sounded like I was talking about a guy because I'm gay, right? Or you can say, oh, it was a metaphor. There's like a bunch of different ways that you can like go all English lit with the, the inquisitors on the text and, and try to make it look like you wrote it. Um, or they will burn her uh, and you can jump in and, and try to save her and, and you get burned together. So um, I haven't organized all of that just yet, but here's your burning. You get to give a little final statement or here's part of the... Uh, the action sequence of uh, trying to intervene. And then, so you, let's say you both die and you go uh, to hell, but it's good because you're saints. So it's uh, in this uh, world, in the story world and the sort of the RPG that I'm, I'm basing it in, uh, the saints can like dive into hell and, and save people and then and then phew, poof, disappear because they, they're like over it, you know? Um, so you can go with Marguerite or without Marguerite and then here we're going to get, you know, okay, you've got the schools active where you're you're in the Grimlands. It's kind of like hell light. People are mostly just depressed. It's not, this is like, oh, this is just level one hell, right? It's like, and then you kind of, they kind of get depressed. They go, okay, well, I think we're running out of time. We should, you know, do what we wanted to do before we like vanish to ash. And then um, there's a girl from the, the very beginning that you met when you were a kid. And then you, she went off and like got married and killed herself because her husband was abusive or something like that. So, and, and that's like kind of the inciting incident for you. So you, you get to see her in hell. And depending on how much you've pumped yourself up as a saint, how much light you have, that's kind of like spirituality. Um, you, you can rack up a discrete number of confessions. So um, let's see, we got false, honest, timid, dominant, right? So we got basics, right? Um, I even took out good, bad, because it was kind of kind of basic. Uh, you got love, hate, which can go towards different parties. Um, and then light is, is spirituality. And then confessions and intercessions. So you can think of these as like closed uh, dimensions where it's just like how many one-ups you've picked up or how many um, puntos you've, you've accumulated, essentially. You know what I mean? So they're they're not weighing in on everything. They're more of, a, of an aggregate thing. Um, and so confessions are things that will come up as, as options in some of these inter encounters. And people will just, you know, oh yeah, you know, I killed a bunch of Muslims in the in the war, you know, and I feel bad, and then they get burned alive. So that was something, okay. Or you know, in hell they'll they'll talk about what they're dealing with, and um, however many people you you save from hell is is the number of intercessions. But the one that kind of matters the most is this girl, and she's the most difficult one to get. So you'll find like a priest in this like gloomy chapel, and that's kind of like a little bit of a spiritual battle, or you can get into a little theology dish with them. Um, but actually like the girl's really psychologically troubled. Uh, so saving her is hard and, and you could be there with Marguerite and the Marguerite's like, girl, I got burned for writing a book. You know, I feel you, you know, some talk like that. She speaks French, but you know, and that's kind of the vibe. And so they collapse together or you embrace her and you collapse with her or you can collapse on your own. So it's kind of like, there's, um, this event of dying and, and you can have an epilogue where you don't die. You just kind of go off and write books. That's kind of boring. So that's not like the, the fullness of like the saint experience, right? It's mostly about this, this whole thing of like getting burned to death by the religious authorities and then going to hell and saving uh, as many people as you can. Right. Um, and then I use, I'll, I'll show you some of the, um, I don't have a ton of spools. This is just to structure a, a basic pacing. Um, I've got a, a fair amount of encounters, and I'm th and these are pretty much all the encounters that I'm going to need to kind of pull off this this thing with this story world. Um, and I've mostly got protagonist Marguerite. This guy's kind of minor. These guys are mostly just for that that trial. If you can hoodwink them or not. Uh, and then this is your ultimate challenge in, in heck is getting her to uh, come around. Um, and then 
for as far as love hate goes, I'll, I'll pretty much deal with one or two of like self love and hate, and then love and hate for probably the protagonist, and that's that's like adequate. Um, so this means that I might be involving maybe yeah like four variables um if i want to uh and it might obscure things but i feel like it gets surreal enough that i'm not too worried about uh the feedback i, I want I, I, I like a certain degree of uncanniness and it's a, it's like a ghost story and it's like emotional um yeah so somewhere in here is is the end and this is the overall structure you've got kind of an act one so let me show you a little bit about the basics of what i'm doing um can i organize these by spool right or creation time happens to be that creation time is a convenient uh correlative uh so anyway um so you've got the Jesus dream, you have this like life-changing dream where you meet Jesus and he's like, there's no life after death, it's just reconciliation. You're like, what the fuck does that mean? So you can you can talk to your dad and you get more honesty, but you get um you get kind of like nudged down a little bit for like, you know, you get admonished for it, or you can keep it to yourself and you become more timid uh, and a little bit less honest, or you can like go out and tell everyone, and then you like really pump up your honesty. Um so that just gives you like a basic starting point where you're moving through the metric space of, of your character. Um, and then also when you, you learn that the, the girl died later on in life and you can have a, a, a total, total nervous breakdown or, or different reactions. Um, so yeah, I'm nudging your self-love. I'm nudging the light is, is kind of a specialized reward that's a little more valuable. So whereas Chris would put that specialized variable that's kind of unipolar in uh, only the periodic Merlin uh, dialogue scenes, I'm I'm kind of sprinkling it in as as like the extra special bonuses if you, if you do the, the really spiritual thing. Um, or you can lie and you like lower your honesty more and... Um, I think you lower your life. I think you can lower your light. Yeah. Light isn't something that's purely creative. Um, so by the time you're entering Paris, you can like kind of lie to the guy. So you, you're like uh, Planescape Torment would do this thing. And Disco Elysium is also a very good reference. Um, Chris, you might actually like that. You play an alcoholic and you spend half the time in internal dialogue trying to like, trying to remember shit. It's like Planescape Torment was like that with, with the amnesia. Um, and, and you can like, rant about syndicalism if you want but it doesn't really change much it's just more role-playing color but anyway yeah i like this thing in planescape tournament where you, where it's like truth or lie and it's like the exact same thing and it's sort of like there's a constructive reality to that and it, it what, what that would do in planescape is, is it would make you more chaotic when you would lie so you could do good deeds and lie all the time and that would make you chaotic good which is a little bit of, of a simplification but hey it had never been done before in uh, role-playing I, I don't think uh, that was 1999. Um, so, you know, it wasn't that great, but, it, you know, uh, pretty good. And then um, once you get to the, the Templar situation, I think like your ability to offer the guy a confession, for example, is, is going to be gated by how much light you have and um, how honest you are is gates some of the uh, like the quarreling brothers this is actually from Plainscape Tournament, where two brothers debating about their inheritance, and you and you can screw them up because you're in this like hell town near Carceri, so everyone's kind of evil. So that's like Plainscape Tournament's vibe. Here you're kind of doing the opposite. Um, so yeah, if you if you're kind of bad, if you have like a high dominance, you can suggest a duel, and then you you know they might actually like kill each other, and you'll lose spirituality for that. Um, and yeah, based on your other variables you'll you'll unlock these different solutions which then allows you to get different rewards from the sort of the filler content um so when i think of these randomly uh random little baggies and you're like you're in act two so you get this baggie and it's like i think of it kind of like side quest content or or something like that um and it's really just a good opportunity for you know random like character development based on well like arthur had a lot of this and it's contextualized by his king so everyone's coming to him all the time with with their problems and it makes a little more sense but as a saint you're kind of going around like hey do you have a problem you know you're just kind of like chatting with people all the time and, and getting into their lives um so yeah um 
Patrick, you know, like I... this isn't even like something where you're going to have a lot of endings. It's more like you you either have this kind of mid ending that's nice and, and petite and that's kind of hard to get, but it's it's underwhelming. Uh, or you have like you know you, you burned up or, or somebody gets burned up uh, and and then you you end up in, in hell saving people and then you turn to ash, right? So it's very existential. Um, can I ask one so quick question can't... before you go yeah, too go far ahead. in this? What is the overall theme of this? It seems like there's a lot going on in here, and I'm just I'm just uh, curious. Well, I would say the theme is uh, that what's really Christian and godly is not burning people alive and helping people. That's kind of the theme. Okay. And also it's, it's really screwed up that they burned this girl. You know, it's, it's one thing to burn the Knights Templars because that's a whole political thing, but you burn this girl for writing a book. That to me is like a, a very underrated uh, atrocity that, you know, doesn't get talked about a lot. So I like, I like telling her story in this particular instance of Saint. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I think Saint in general is sort of about like spirituality is is about this is kind of it's kind of like actually this is about like being chaotic good in a way. Like it's about okay. like being a weirdo who like touches people's hearts is I think really no, it's, it, it just I, I was I was as you were talking about this stuff, I was trying to picture in my mind what exactly was the overarching theme because it seemed like you were going through an awful lot. Or well, thank you. You're going on this. So I I just I just wanted to I just wanted to well, get I, you know, I what's going on like here. waves yeah. and then you kind of soak in it and then you go, oh, maybe there, that was something spiritual or whatever, right? Like, and you yeah. try to figure out what that means. Um, so I've got a lot of uh mid journey art I can drop through, or I could, you know, I'll just put them in uh in the Discord, I think. Uh, okay, better. And uh, that way I can dump a bunch of them and, and give you guys some cool preview. Uh, yeah, yeah, Patrick, I think I think uh, it would be better to uh, present your system in a uh, structured format on discord there there are a number of what would be the best place would it be the storytelling topic of we could probably create a separate oh. uh, mm -hmm. uh area so there's the sweet yeah, weave we you're safe i think that would probably be a good place to, to okay. throw it in there i can do that i can mm -hmm. do that um, is it so um, one of the existing specific story or is it all original it's all original. I wrote um I wrote this like guidebook for for the saint setting. You know, people do like you know princess the the cakening or whatever. Uh, they they make these fan games based on White Wolf template. Um, so I I did that for the idea of saints being a thing you could role play. And then uh, I was like I was thinking about doing different weird little surrealist story worlds as a way to do a, a like a sixty encounter story world uh or 30 or something right and um and then i, I ended up on this because I, I didn't want to like spend so much headspace time in, in like things that are too negative you know so i thought i'll, I'll do something positive because my mental health could use it you know um but also i have become uh, a lot more spiritual and religious over the last year and uh re and spent a lot of time learning all, about all these different things and like sufism and all the old stuff like hermeticism and whatnot um so yeah i mean it's it's something i'll probably continue to do once i polish this off i will spend those sunday times uh on the the neo monkey super chimpanzee story world which is more ambitious in size and um is more of like a graphic novel and um maybe is more postmodern less pious although there are themes of morality in it um so yeah that and that would take me so like this has taken me i want to say i've got so far about three thousand ish words in it um and it'll be about maybe six or seven when i'm done and that the amount of time i've spent researching it was maybe 30 or 40 hours and the amount of time but that's including going off on tangents and just learning everything about Sufism and other things like that. But, but okay, that's, that, so that maybe isn't project time, uh, but let's say 20 hours of research and another 20 or 40 hours of tinkering with the, the GUI and then writing 3000 words only takes me two hours. You know what I mean? If I'm cooking. Right. So, and, and a lot of that's placeholder just to frame up what the reactions are. Um, because you know you got to design your story world before you write the novel is is my recommendation um and that what is, is the title be of also title? very instructive for ais to auto finish and and you know that yeah. can be helpful later 
what's the title of this? Uh, so I can add it. Uh, Saint the Reconciliation, I'll Be Your Mirror. Can you type that into the chat? Because I am literally not going to be able to remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, it's I like a... one have a playable, um, I guess something that's a prototype. I'd like to test it. Yeah, you can play through it to about halfway. Uh, I, I did a little run the other day. Um, and uh, if I tinker on it a little more, I can get it to run through uh, run through hack all the way to the end, and I'll uh, kick it to the to the Discord. Yeah, and you can just cool. run it in. Uh, you can run it in Sweepleaf, and Sweepleaf also exports to HTML. But I have to uh, put in tags for all the images, and there isn't documentation for that yet. Sasha just said, like, "Oh yeah, you can do that. You can just put in tags." So I guess I know HTML, and I can do that. So I have. I haven't gotten to it yet, um, but yeah, I'll. Uh, but the, just the the bare bones uh, sort of draft, I'll maybe have in another week. I want to say. Okay. Well, thanks for well, your time and yeah. and in humoring my uh, process, and I hope it's instructive. I think that the um, the basics of small nudges that get a little bit bigger is good. I think that gating things that nudge you more uh, based on where, where what momentum you're ready in that's that's a nice simple one um spool clustering is okay uh keeps your workload constrained um having a few big formulas is good and having them based on simple things like accretion of, of good things and they blend uh or 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 maybe a reversal and that's very highlighted i'm not i i might I might have a reversal. There might be like two ways to save the the sad girl at the end. If she's really, if you're really screwing it up, there might be a way to have a reversal and kind of pull pull her back at the end. Uh, but mostly, it would obviously just be an accumulation of the of good traits over over your role play, right? Like that's like the obvious thing, and it's those reversals that I think, uh, and that's kind of what Christianity is about relative, to, let's say Islam, where it's more like you know you. are your, your score came in bad and you're going to go to hell. Right. And that, that's, so they're very like focused on that. Right. But Christians are all about like, Oh, you get saved, you know? So it's, there's this, this like, Oh, I love you. No, it's like more dramatic. Okay, right? let's, uh, yeah. We have only about five minutes left. So sure. I want to make sure that uh, uh, everybody, that if there are any last comments, uh, I'll, I'll just throw in a, a brief comment that, uh, uh, I, I continue to review the records on Le Mort d'Artour, and it is interesting that activity continues on it. People are continuing to play it. Interestingly, we are getting fewer uh, people who just dip their toes into the water and more people who hang in there and actually go through the whole thing. I have not seen any uh, commentary on it on the web. Has anybody else seen any such commentary? Okay. Not um, yet, no. The, uh, uh, let's see. Um, so, but anyway, also more people actually finishing it. So uh, activity levels are not as high as they were in the first month or two when the word was just sort of initially bouncing around. But anyway, it continues to uh, to attract some interest and that's, I suppose, a good thing. Although ultimately, I don't really care. Uh, the uh, That is, I... Uh, I'm not measuring success by number of people playing or anything like that. Uh, my success is by my own measures. Any other comments that uh, anybody would like to throw in here? Well, you showed us a graph of, uh, a few months ago of how you were redoing in Merlin um, with, it looked like it was pretty branch intensive. And um, I was wondering if you had thought about having well you don't have any p variables or anything for merlin so there's there's nothing that's gonna um align those scenes along vectors of, of those numbers right um no, i am not uh i have told myself i'm not going to i i do intend to make revisions to it but uh 
I've told myself I will not make those uh, uh, modifications until after until the creative juices have built up and are demanding to come out. Uh, right now, okay. my primary computer project is the Balance of the Planet project, and that keeps me busy. But uh, most of my time, I try to spend outside getting exercise. So, oh, okay. is this about Balance of the Planet? Uh, this is the first time hearing of any activity in there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I began. Uh, uh, working on it in March, and uh, I worked on it rather intensively through uh, March, April, and May, but I have cut back on it a bit uh, <laughs> for two reasons. One, uh, I'm struggling with the most important algorithm, uh, which is the algorithm that uh, we're talking about. Energy is one of the core issues in Balance of the Planet and the multiple sources of energy. And with energy, we have price, supply, and demand for each. I think there are eight different sources of energy. You got price, supply, and demand for each of them separately and for energy as a whole. And uh, it turns out, although the simulation proceeds over 75 years, one year at a time, um, Price, supply, and demand uh, need to be uh, need to converge each year. So I need an inner convergent algorithm inside the outer algorithm, the the loop for year by year evolution. Uh, you can't you can't have energy prices changing on an annual basis. You've got to actually uh, have them equalize. Or I'm sorry. Um, converge on their final values each year separately because the those the three of them all interact with each other. They're not. It's not a simple causal link of A causes B. It's A infl uh, influences B, which influences C, which influences A, and you've got I've got to have a way of converging that loop. So it's. Uh, hmm. It's a difficult algorithm, although I had an interesting conversation just two days ago with an old friend who is, uh, turned out was working on a very similar algorithm, only having to do with uh, human metabolism and the way metabolism converges based on uh, blood sugar, energy level, temperature, and a couple of other things. So anyway. Um, really neat. Have you given any thought to uh, doing a really petite style story world as a as an exercise? A what style story world? Doing a small story world. Oh no, no, I'm I'm I don't want to do any story worlds until after I'm satisfied with uh, uh, Le Mort d'Arthur, which probably won't come until at least ten years after I die. So. <laughs> It will. Sure. <laughs> oh, I do. Well, have... let's uh, let's try to get some more uh, like review content. Maybe do a let's play YouTube of uh, La Morte Tour, and um, I I ought to do a, a piece. And I I don't know where my warm connections are in game journalism anymore, but um, I'm sure I can can pitch somebody where you can get some views on it, and then that that'll give you a, a nice bump. Okay. Um. And I'm I think sure LMD uh, does uh, does well for a, a let's play. I mean, it seems more of a personal thing. You know, it's like reading a novel. Um, but again, I'm also like, let's, let's so read Brothers Care Mazov. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Smirnikov? Who saw that coming? <laughs> and I like look, look up at the YouTubers like, huh? Yeah. No, but but still, I mean, that that's what it is. You have to kind of um, dumb things down a little bit for people. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to get more reach, it's just what it is. Well, I mean, I, with with a review down. essay, I wouldn't dumb it down, right? I certainly no, didn't dumb it down. I certainly didn't dumb down Le Morte d'Arthur, which is one reason why not many people play it, which is fine with me. Yeah. So, okay, well, That's we're cool. out of time, so I will see you guys next month. Okay. That's good. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.